Hello everyone, happy Friday to you. It's been a short week for us here already and hope you had a great fourth and looking forward to the next week that we have coming up. Lots of great things we have planned for you as far as lives. We're gonna be painting the interior of a car from start to finish. We're gonna show you on a truck actually. And we're gonna show you what you can do to transform the interior of your leather vehicle using the fabulous finish all. Today we're gonna to show you uh, some tips on making your pieces look great and what the durability of using all-in-one as well as finish all is in your home and using that on a countertop i have one here that we finished earlier uh, maybe about a month ago and this is one of our demos that we did and also we have a cabinet door that has one coat right now of irish garden and we have marred the finish and what we're going to do is show you how to touch up and we're also going to show you how to touch up finish all so Bear with us if you have had issues and maybe you have a mark on your cabinets or maybe you even uh, want to know this for the future of your uh, project and uh, the wear going forward in your kitchen or on your leather and, and maybe you're using these products. We're gonna show you how to maintain and keep that finish looking fabulous through the life of your piece and of your kitchen cabinet or your bathroom and whatever you are using the products on. So let's talk about touching up. Generally, when we're talking about touching up, there's been an issue, and that's gonna be called the word prep. So if you're having your paint chip away, and maybe you've even painted with other products, and you're gonna find the same issues apply to this paint as well as other paint products. If you haven't removed the grease or the surface oils, build up, and those things from your piece that you're painting, you are going to experience some chipping. And generally, you'll see that around one place, and that is the handles and the hardware. And why is that? Because that's what's on your hands, that's when you're cooking, you have grease on your hand, you reach for the salt, the pepper, the garbage can drawer. What's on your hands? Grease, right? And when you clean that and you didn't have the hardware off, you generally don't get around that hardware very good. And that's the first place you'll see chipping and that's associated simply with grease and oil. So what you wanna do when you have a place that you want to repair, remember why you're having to repair it. It was because there's oils present. So what I would suggest you doing is using a good scouring pad, using the degreaser on the whole surface, your whole door, let's say. Let's say you had a little place like we do here. Clean that whole surface properly using the sanding deglosser. Use the grit, the um, scrubby here, and really get in there and remove and prep this door for the new touch-up paint. Once you have that done, now you are ready. Take a towel and wipe off the liquid, the excess if you're using our product. If you're using others, notice the instructions that ask you to what's called a water rinse, especially if you're using, uh, is it true? What's crud true? cutter. Crud cutter, we have noticed that that is leaving a residue and people are having issues with crud cutter because they're not removing it. So crud cutter is leaving a film. So I would suggest either using our sanding deglosser, which is now available, same cost to you, and you can get that right in your order. Use that sanding deglosser Read the directions, make sure it doesn't require a rinse because if it does, you need to do that step. Don't skimp here. Uh, that is one place that I recommend that you follow every one of the directions is that because that's what's going to maintain the finish, right? So now that you have this little mark, let me turn that to the top here. It's not a big mark and you can see this damage on it right here. This is beautiful Irish garden, which is a soft kind of a green and a blue mixed together. But I'm gonna show you next to blue what that is, just so you get an, an idea. This is Antoinette, and it's really a, uh, what I wanna call a cornflower blue, kind of an aged blue up against beautiful Irish garden that will give you some tone of what you're looking at here. Okay, so what we wanna do is first of all, we want to get these, when you're doing a touch up, the main thing you need is one little artist brush and your paint. <clears throat> We're going to talk about paint too, and that's keeping your paint on hand, even if it's in a sample jar or some sort of airtight container. You want to always keep paint around. That's an older jar. <laughs> uh, that's an older jar. You want to keep one around always to touch up, and it needs to be the color that you painted your cabinets with. And if you are mixing together, maybe you have a, a quite large kitchen. If you get in three of these, what I suggest doing so you can touch up your project as you go forward, if you use all three cans at three different times and you ordered one from us and one from Amazon and one from your mother, uh, you're gonna have three <laughs> different shades and they may vary in the slightest. But what you need to do is have a gallon jug, mix those three together, stir it up, and then pour it right back into, the con into these containers and put the lid on. That way, 
all three of them will match. That's an old painter's trick, by the way. And that's how they do it, even with wall paints. That's called boxing. Mm -hmm. It's a term that's very, very uh, well known to painters. And if mm -hmm. you're a painter, you know that, wall painters and all, even if you buy the paint in big box stores or you buy it from a hardware store, all of those paints, especially when you're using rich pigmented colors, need to be boxed if you have, have the intention of touching up, which we all should think in those terms. Who knows? So what to do to touch up? Get your brush ready. Just get your little artist brush out. And what you want to try to do is, what we're going to first do is we're going to just go in here and we're going to get everything on one tone, right? So that's obviously going to probably dry and show right there. All we're going to do is try to get everybody up to the same color. And then we're going to come back to this in a minute. We're going to lay this to the side and let that dry. Now, we'll come back to that and we're going to do a coat over the entire surface. If I were to just cover this right now with one coat of paint, because that had a light spot here, this would only have one coat on it if I went over the whole door. The rest of the door would have two. So what's going to happen? You're always going to see that. So we're going to get this up to one tone, and that was touching up that little spot, and we'll go back over that in a minute with a true applicator and one more coat of paint. So that's how you touch up, and we're going to do that on uh, finish all right here on galvanized. I'm going to walk around here, and my camera girl is uh, Melissa. <laughs> Okay, there you go. The light's going crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, you might need to touch that little guy. Touch that screen so the light balance. There it goes. I don't see it doing it. Touch mm -hmm. it with your finger, please. Wait a little bit. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Now it'll stop. All right, so galvanize. Same thing. Y'all know galvanize. Finish off. This is a bypass bar stool, and we did our best to mar this finish, and we just scratched and scratched and Tried scratched. Tried to replicate like a cat scratch. Can you one see coat, it there? There's one coat on this. This is something that's been sitting around here in our showroom for quite some time, and it's two colors still, so you can see it was bycast, and we painted it with galvanized. Same thing, same rules apply. We're gonna do the same thing, get a brush. You'd clean it first. Yes, you're gonna wipe it down with your uh, non-acetone fingernail polish remover to make sure you've removed any grime. We're going over this whole thing, or at least this back area, once we finish. Right now, we just want to go in here and touch it. Now, don't worry that it matches or it don't or how it looks. Just leave it like that. That's all we're going to do. It's real simple. And then in a moment, we'll come back using the true <laughs> applicator, and we're going to give all this a light stipple, and that will blend it in. Just blue, beauty blend, as Melissa says. <laughs> beauty blend. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is countertops and the durability of a painted countertop finish. You guys have often asked, is this good uh, enough to hold up on a laminate, on a vinyl, on um, thermofoil, maybe on your kitchen cabinets if you live in a uh, mobile home and you're worried, is it going to hold up, is it going to last? This is pure Formica. You couldn't get any more of a non-porous surface than Formica that I know of. That is a formed plastic, so there's no, there's no porosity whatsoever to Formica, and you know that, and it's meant to be that way. Do so, you guys remember this countertop? This is the one from our video where we did yes. the plastic bag, the this plastic grocery bag. This is the plastic bag. bag countertop that we just took off the vanity and brought it in here to show you. We have let water sit on this, and Melissa was demonstrating this earlier. I think she's wiped it off now. Yep. But we have just pulled water and let it sit here. We have a countertop that we've used now well over a year, maybe into the two-year mark. That was the first one that we did using the all one paint products. Uh, this particular countertop was done in maybe three colors. I'm thinking mm -hmm. we used, what we use here? Stonehenge, Cobblestone, and Coliseum, I Yeah, think. lots in the gray families, but of course we have a video on this one. Uh, we've been cleaning it, and we've been using some Clorox wipes just to show you that it is durable. You cannot scratch it. Now, we did cut, top coat this particular one with the white antiquing gel. That was the top coat that we used, and we used it simply to tone this out so it didn't look so splotchy and it just gave it enough of a white just to simply mute the colors that we did in the um just by using the stippling motion here she's trying to get the light balance so you can see it a little better but uh there's no scratching it we've scratched we've done everything to it today to try uh she and i both we see if I this uh, cannot do anything to paul's got gloves on i cannot don't move <laughs> this finish at all zero uh, you can scratch and do anything you want to do to it. Now, do you need to put a top coat over this? You can. We're not saying that you don't have to put top coats. You can even add a gloss if you wish. You want it to be glossier. But remember, anytime you add a gloss, you're going to see brush strokes. You're going to see more texture come out. Right now, this has zero texture. There's zero giveaway that this was a painted countertop, other than the fact that 
It's a spongy texture, but it really, really emulates what you see in a natural uh, stone or in a natural uh, countertop. You cannot tell, other than it having the bullnose edge and this built-in backsplash. You wouldn't even know this if I just walked in the room to see that this was not a, uh, a made this way. So. <laughs> It's all up to you on how much time you want to spend making it look great and adding back the base coat. I find that is the best thing. This is how we put down Coliseum as the base coat. First of all, cleaned it with a big glosser. That's the key. Get that oil and that grease and that build up off, especially concentrating around the sink area uh, where there's glues and there's set of things have settled and cleaners and just everything have gotten around here where you've used it through time and through years. You want to be sure and really work hard and go around that sink and there's caulking also there. You're going to be painting over some of that caulk. So, Remember to get the deglosser in there really good and tape off your sink. Use some green or use your uh, painter's tape and go in there and tape off the sink area. Clean well, put down your base coat. We use Coss in here and then put on the other colors with the plastic bag. And then the main thing that we did was when we were done, we used the Coliseum base coat back over it again. And what that does is that just softens the whole thing so it doesn't look so splotchy. And then just enough color will come through. And then lastly, we put on the antiquing gel in the white and that gave it a little more softening and blending. So all those things together. This only took us a very, it sounds like a very laborious process. Mm -hmm. It truly Fast. wasn't. It was pretty quick, pretty yeah. quick. Great transformation, mm -hmm. I thought. And uh, pour some water on there. Oh. Sure. Let it sit for a minute while we're doing the other thing. We'll just pour water on it. I mean, it can sit, and uh, I don't know how we're gonna get them over here to show it to them is a problem. Oh, here they can see that there's water on there. Yeah, you can there see you go. Just pull it up. Yeah, you can uh, see it. We did this it sat here for hours, and then mm -hmm. we came back and wiped it off when we were trying to scrub and see mm -hmm. if it was gonna clean. So let's talk about. It was out in our up. shop, so it got a little dirty, and I it, couldn't. It was uh, dirty. I couldn't have you seeing that on TV here. <laughs> She's still on TV, you know that. <laughs> Melissa is on TV. She tells me we're on TV. Doesn't <laughs> it feel like TV? TV? Today, isn't it? It is like TV. Okay, so this one is dry enough that we're going to brush on a coat now of beautiful Irish Garden over this. And where did I set my sample? Am I losing oh, my mind? Oh, I, she, I swiped it all the way. It, <laughs> it was That's in my shop. <laughs> now you know that, right? So let's just brush right over our damage here. And I'll show you that one more time. So this was the area that I just touched up with my um, little small artist brush. I'm just gonna give it a whole coat. This already only had one coat. This was a demo that we did where we just put on a simple coat. So this is great coverage. And this was a dark door. Let me flip around here so you can see. This was a dark mahogany door. Mm -hmm. Jacobian color actually, really dark. So you know our technique is to brush on the paint liberally using the brush. Get it down in there really well. I'm putting a rag under this. So I'm gonna let bang in. Just put your paint down there, get a good coat, go right over that damage. It wasn't totally dry, but close enough. Just get on some paint. You see, I got quite a bit of paint on here, right? Not running, but it's not, uh, I'm not dry brushing it either. Now I'm gonna use the true applicator and I'm gonna go right over that. It's dry, it isn't damp. Just gonna go right over that, right over the damage. And I'm gonna move that paint around and stipple it out. Maybe. So if you were doing a if you were doing this one cabinet door that was on your cabinet uh -huh. set yep. hanging, would you just do this one door? I would only do the door that was damaged, sure. Mm -hmm. Why would you need to go further? Right. Only places that you have that are peeling or whatever, then that's whatever issue mm -hmm. you had. Hopefully you got it all clean except maybe just that one area. Or yeah. you could have had a dog hit it or, a, you know, somebody jump up on it when it, before, before it, it was green. Yeah, or, yeah while yeah. it was green. You might have gotten that to happen at that time. Who knows? Damages will happen over time with anything. Again, if it was damage-free, impervious to damage, we'd be painting skyscrapers with it and they'd never have to paint again, right? Wouldn't that be a deal? I don't know of a paint that's that good. There's not. Even <laughs> epoxies, car paints, catalyzed paints, electro electromagnetic paints, none of them are forever, believe me. Yeah. Um, but this one is going to be doggone close for your interior, and it's going to look wonderful when you do it yourself. That's the Can main you point thing. where the touch-up was? Well, I think it, it was, was right in this area. There. Can you see it? it oh, no, I touched it. Now you can see it. <laughs> that I can see it. But as that begins to dry and lay down, it's going to dry to a matte sheen. We'll come back to mm -hmm. it in a minute. And now let's touch up mm -hmm. that one. This one actually dried so good. I don't even know that you really need to touch well, it up, but we'll show it. We'll show them again. Mm -hmm. I'll just show them again. So back to the countertops. Dee was asking, uh -huh. um, 
She's got man-made marble. Uh-huh. I think she said cultured. Not cultured. cultured. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And the sink's built right in a bit. Yeah. Is that her question? Yeah. Can she... Well, she's wanting to know, could she paint that? Uh, D, same thing. But now, if your sink is built in, which generally in cultured marble, that's the whole reason people buy cultured marble tops, is the sink's just a one piece. You can tape off of some people do it recently in our group even. If you're not in our group, go join our group. Lots of great ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to turn my applicator right up here onto this, and I'm going to just go over the whole thing and just show you. Just stipple this out, stipple mm -hmm. right over the damage, and just move right there. Now, if this is perfectly matched, if this is exactly the can we painted this with, you, this will never show. This is the ticket to touching up, is using the true applicator to stipple and blend, just like putting on your makeup curls. You want to stipple out. You don't want to show on the neck where you join your chin. You know, you're using that to blend and smooth and soften. Same rules apply. There you go. And just keep on going until you get it looking good. Blend it out as far as you need to go. Get the whole thing a coat if you need to. But if you've got dogs in your home, cats in your home, over time, you're going to get a damage, mm -hmm. especially when you've got something light like this. Mm -hmm. Um, but we really had to work hard to get that little bit of... Yes, we did. Of, uh, I was impressed there. because this, this material, this vinyl, is not strong on its own. You know, this stuff is terrible, actually. It's very low quality and delaminates very easily. But uh, where this had been painted, it didn't even want to scrape, scratch, over, uh, even down to get to the brown, to mm -hmm. get to the old finish. So, really good bond. We had to work really, really hard. Yeah, we did. Uh, we'll you want to wipe that, that water away? Oh, let's wipe the water away. Let's now, let me that. see. Can you guys see the water there? See the little bit of shiny? All right, let's just sop it up here. So just imagine that's water hanging out around your... Uh, Sink and so on. Yeah. There you go. No hurt. Looks great. Can't tell it's even done. No. Nope. Can't tell that. Nope. Looks good. Sadly, I can't flip it up there to show yeah. you. Yeah. Now I got it. All right, mm -hmm. we just wanted to touch on those subjects with you and show you some ways to touch up and take care of your new finishes, especially if you're trying to do some projects that you're unsure of and wonder how they are going to last and perform over time. So these are easy upgrades that you can make around your own home and using the all-in-one paint products along with Finish All gives you a way to transform virtually every finish in your home. Uh, that's what we're all about and we hope that you will join us in our group. We have an awesome group and it's called the Official DIY Heirloom Traditions Paint Group, and that is pinned right here in this post. If you'll comment below right here, you can get yourself a free 8-ounce sample of the all-in-one paint simply by coming into that group, and we'll send you a personal message with a hot link that will take you right to that group. The only thing you have to pay is $6.99 shipping, and that's a $24 value for that sample. It will paint 30 to 40 square feet, including your front door or small projects, vanities, a uh, good size, a good size project actually, mm -hmm. and you coffee get, table. Yep, you can start trying and testing the paint for yourself and see the durability, and that it is a no sanding, no wax, and no top coat needed for interior as well as your exterior projects. And then you can learn about finish all if you want to tackle something maybe that is vinyl or leather. Finish all will also work for any wood or solid surfaces as well as the all in one. So we look forward to meeting you there in the group, and we encourage you to jump over there and get yourself a free sample. And we will look forward to uh, the weekend with you, and we'll look to see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.